Your Excellency Mr. Ali Al Mahdi, Assistant Secretary, dear audience, peace be upon all of you. Our, our regional Center for Educational Planning is honored to receive you in the first uh, se educational sessions for 2015. 15 and the title of Potentials of National Assessments in Policy and Planning. Uh, planning, planning is the most important challenges facing the educational system because the national assessments is a necessity uh, and its outcomes is very important to analyze and to judge our success in achieving the educational objectives in addition to the importance uh, of the analysis in forming the uh, strategy for uh, making the required uh, uh, decisions and increasing its efficiency. Now I'd like to introduce uh, Mrs. Mahra Al-Mutairi to welcome your attendance. She is kindly requested to proceed to the podium. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, peace be upon our Prophet, his family and companions, Your Excellency Ali Mohammed Suwedi, uh, Under Secretary for Private Education, Dr. Uh, Taysir and Naimi, Advisor of His Excellency, the Minister, uh, Zone Directors and Deputies, uh, Speakers, dear uh, brothers and sister, de sister, dear audience, I'm pleased to welcome you again in the Regional Center for Educational Planning to resume our mission in promotion of educational culture uh, with such seminars uh, are tools uh, of dissemination of the education through your attendance and uh, participation in order to face the challenges facing the educational system. A recipe among its objectives has been attracting educators and experts experts for the uh, achievement of uh, objectives the subject of this uh, seminar uh, in the uh, in, in this uh, season is one of the most important issues making a challenge in all in most of the countries the results the, 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 the re results of, of national assessments and their analysis is very important when it is accurate will at, will attribute in the success of the uh, quality uh, of education as well as analysis of the uh, national assessments will be a reference for reviewing the uh, educational uh, plans and the strategies and it will review the programs of projects in an integrated manner in addition to enabling decision makers to issue objective decisions in the academic areas and increasing the efficiency and the strategy of training practice all over the schools and in our classes and which will reflect the efficiency of the teacher and his qualifications in addition to academic benchmarking on the national level and and uh, to, to avoid negative points and to support the object, uh, the, the positives. Uh, uh, therefore, the beneficiaries of these policies are uh, from these policies and the plans come from all categories to enable uh, them uh, to develop the school performance, uh, reaching effective learning uh, through three uh, three sectors uh, in order to to change the national systems in policy and uh, planning and to overcome the challenges facing such uh, studies studying the uh, effect of the national assessments and uh, their compliance with the policies of the ministry achieving the analysis of the national assessments and the need to 
uh, educate the teacher and train, uh, train him. We are looking for your participation in order to achieve good results in the national assessment outcomes. Thanking you for your attendance to this seminar with our best wishes and regards. In this context, I kindly request Mrs. Khawla al Husseini, uh, uh, mathematics uh, advisors, in order to moderate this session. She is kindly requested to proceed to the podium. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, dear audience, peace be upon all of you. We meet today in order to identify the national assessments and their and analysis of the outcomes and uh, effect of the national assessments in developing the policies of the Ministry of Education. The national assessments is one of the most important tools for the development of the education and improving its outputs. The international assessments give in the accurate indicators in reflecting the results of uh, achievement of uh, students. The international assessments is very important for the uh, teacher to identify the results of his students and to know the strength points of such uh, of students. Uh, the, uh, the international assessments provide uh, provide uh, re results and indications to the leadership and the ministry and the teacher and such analysis of the national assessments we uh, the, he can know the skills owned by the students and the knowledge of the students in order to grow and uh, promote and develop the performance of the students also the principal of the school he can uh, know the level of his school through through reviewing the national assessments and compare the same with the other uh, other schools students this is good opportunity uh, analysis of the national assessments is very important to enable the decision maker to check the achieve the development of student achievements in uae we we uh, we apply national assessments on the third, the third, fifth, and ninth classes to know the effect of strategies or uh, teaching techniques and uh, effect of assessments in uh, through uh, tracking uh, his development all over these grades. Uh, in this seminar, we'll discuss uh, three work papers. It will discuss the national assessments uh, on the level of the ministry a school and teacher in building development uh, developmental programs and finding alternatives in the school achievements in light of the national assessments the first one will be uh, potentials of national assessments in policy and the planning first uh, building corrective uh, uh, procedures and finding the suitable mechanisms the second uh, aspect will face the challenges facing application of these policies the first uh, paper will be by uh, professor taysir uh, al nuaimi advisor of uh, ministry of education united arab emirates dr taysir is holder of phd in philosophy in educational psychology in 1986 he is a professor at many jordanian and arab uh, uni universities and is the head of the uh, human resources he worked as a minister of Ed minister of education in jordan for two sub uh, consecutive periods and he's a member of the jordanian uh, parliament he has many publications more than 30 researches in many foreign mag arab and uh, foreign and arab magazines and 50 uh, reports mentioned in education education planning and education equality he has recorded more than 200 
consultations in the educational planning. He's a member of many academic councils and national and regional teams. I kindly uh, request Dr. Taysir uh, Naimi to proceed to the podium. Most merciful, prayers to be upon his, uh, his prophets. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to be here with you today in this seminar, which I believe touches many important uh, issues. And I would like to thank uh, Mrs. Maran Dawi for her invitation to participate in such important seminar. The subject that I was asked to talk about <coughs> was within the within the assessment uh, system, but it takes the higher level of the of the using and facilitating the tests results within the which is the macro level. In, in the pyramid of the uh, educational system, which deals with how you deal with the test scores, especially the, the scores on national level and the international level as well. And the processes of analysis for the, uh, to de develop, how to develop the policies and how to uh, monitor these policies and putting them into a working mechanism where it, it could be executed. Let's again at first about some definitions of the uh, policy because there are more than there's an overlapping of more than one concept. We want it to be uh, so explicit but it's a definition in general. It's an explicit or implicit single decision of group decisions which may set out directives of guiding future decisions. Initiate or retard action or guide implementation of previous decisions. Therefore, these decisions that are usually done by legislators are either put a decision or, or, or cancel a decision or uh, control a, a, a authority of, uh, of a school or an institution. Let's talk about how these policies are made based on the tests of, of these tests, the score of these tests. We have to know that there's, not more, there's more than one domain of these tests. That's why there's, there are variables in the educational system that are affected directly by the policies of education and there are factors that surround the educational system but are not affected directly by the policies. Therefore, the, these policies that are used by the policy makers and decision makers in the educational system are mainly based on the variables that could be affected by these policies. For example, we could say that the entries of education are within the, inf the direct influence of the variables. Me, as a, as a policy uh, developer, I could affect the rate of uh, students to teacher. I can change, for example, the qualifications of the teachers. Of the uh, of the syllabi of, of the of the schools, these are directly influenceable by variables. But there are many indirect uh, effects that cannot be uh, seen easily. For example, the economical and and, and uh, sociological uh, level of the students. This affects the education system 
but the decision maker cannot influence such factors through the policies. Number one, this takes time and also takes a, a, huge, a, a bigger system that would uh, overlap with other uh, systems, not just the education system. Therefore, we have to see that the, uh, the policy cycle in the education system and the role of these assessments in, in these policies gives these feedback to develop and analyze and prioritize these policies and usually they are directly in the influenceable variables because there are other factors that we cannot uh, that could affect the system but we cannot uh, change with the policies also educational policies in the educational systems are usually adopted by many methods and approaches. Some decision makers in the educational systems, they take these policies off their head. They say, we have to know that the, the teacher should be one, two, three, four, therefore the policy should be saying he should be, have this qualification, he should have X and Y and Z. And this is a very common trend. And maybe there is nothing wrong with it. It's because maybe it is made upon the common sense. But, of course, there are many flaws in this system because these policies may not affect, may not be effective. Some decision makers or policy makers would like to borrow policies. For example, they would go to visit a country or read a report or see other uh, score results from other countries and they would say, yes, Singapore, for example, have, have a good uh, uh, scores because they have something different in 1, 2, 3, 4, Shanghai as well and therefore. This, this could be a recipe for disaster or for failure in many uh, policy of education, especially in, in, in the po education policy, because we should we should be uh, we should be cautious of this. There's nothing wrong with seeing, observing, and studying other uh, experiences, but it should but our uh, our policy should be evidence based. That shows. that shows the factors of success and failure or failure of these policies. So we have to be evidence-based policy makers where we are talking about a logical, approachable and systematic uh, method of reviewing these policies and then we could decide which of these policies could be uh, effective. We talk a little about the assessment system Mrs. System, uh, Mrs. Khawla mentioned this. Uh, there are many uh, systems that overlap. Of course, there are many uh, common base for these for these systems. When we talk about assessment, we talk about a process of gathering the evaluating the information of what students know and understand and can do in order to make an informed decision about next steps in the educational process. Therefore, an assessment system, whether it was tests or other uh, methods, are a group of policies, structures, practices, and tools for generating and using information on student learning and achievement. Usually, the education, in the education system, there are three types of assessments, three forms of assessments. And this, by the way, is the strength point of this, uh, of this meeting, is that our presentations are organized in this form, on these three levels. 
There's the classroom assessments, which is not what I'm talking about today. Another colleague uh, would talk about that. And, and this assessment, usually on the uh, classroom level, the, the, main, uh, the main reason for that is to have an instant uh, feedback about what uh, is being learned by individual student products. Then there's the examinations, not tests, not assessments. This is also one form of assessments. It is to, for making decisions about an individual student's progress. And their progress through the educational system. Usually this form is used give a qualification for the student. Therefore, the 12th class here, we don't call it assessment, we call it a, an examination. Because the main main object of that is to make a qualification that the student have achieved what was meant by the educational system. When we select students for uh, specific programs, this also comes within the examination. The third form is the large scale the large scale system level assessments. And this usually is for monitoring and providing policymakers and practitioners relevant information on overall performance levels in the system changes in these levels and contributing factors. And so they could change the, the levels of the educational, uh, uh, sorry, progress levels of the students from one time to another in a comparison way. We will, we will be discussing about the, the large scale system wide level assessment. There are three main types or subheaders of these studies before we start of how we can use these uh, scores. We have the, the first one which takes the census based national assessments where we evaluate all the students, not all levels, but it could be for example certain levels, for example the odd number uh, levels, but we don't talk about selecting uh, a, a sample based uh, from students. We take all the students nationwide. So we say, for example, all the students in class X, Y, and Z, we will test them on our assessment, assess them on, other, uh, on these criteria. The other one is based on a sample, sample based, which is basically, it's, by the way, it is the the most common because the census based is, uh, is is difficult to achieve. So the sample base is more common, and then we can do the comparison. Then there's the international comparisons. The when we talk about the census based national assessment, it provides information on student achievement for who for the educational system as a, as a whole for the sectors of the system as well, for uh, syllabi, for tests, for HR, for schools, for uh, other sectors. Schools on, on, on level of one school, for teachers and classes, as well as individual students, and also it helps uh, in analyzing the factors associated with the achievement of the educational system where it, it sheds the light on the inter interrelations between the educational system of teaching the students and the, these uh, factors. The sample-based uh, assessments are the same, but they don't provide all of the information for the policymakers. They make, they provide information about the performance of students that would help the educational policy on the level of the educational system, on the level of sectors, 
and on the level of the factors associated with achievements. The last one is the international assessment, where this started, by the way, a uh, long time ago. The first international uh, assessment in the world started in mid-60s. Then it stopped, and then in the mid-90s it came back again, and now there's a huge escalation in the international assessment. And there's also more reservations about them. We don't, we don't have the time to discuss today, but generally the, the main objective of it was to study the contrast between the performance of countries in the educational system and what are the relationship between these uh, comparisons and the achievement levels of the students uh, in comparison to the educational system of these levels. Because then we need to know why South Korea or Shanghai does this or that. We need to see what are the policies that change these students' achievement uh, levels. And usually it provides information that are normally, not normally obtainable in a national assessment. Because there's international side of it. So there's more than one uh, nation that I can compare between. Also, it helps to define what is achievable. How much students can learn and what, at what age. And also, it allows the researchers to observe and characterize the consequences of different practices and policies. For example, that these policies and how effective they are among uh, countries and other nations. And also, it provides a very important uh, uh, database for the uh, policy makers so we could identify the uh, that it, it question to question some uh, concepts that we have for granted, whether it's policies policies in syllabi or in approaches or in teachers. These international uh, studies shows us, gives us this opportunity to reconsider these uh, concepts. Of course, the 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 need that is provided the the. the, uh, the what is offered by these assessments is, is only a part of what could be offered by them as a whole. So they if we look at the pyramid, the, the base is of this pyramid is the students, uh, is the schools, where there is the medium level, where the sectors for the management and control, and then the macro level, the national general level, where the policy uh, and strategy planning Without data, without data, the policy make policy making would be haphazard operation. That's why all all be out of mind. So these data and assessment scores usually on this school level give the information that would help developing the uh, operations and procedures. How can we do this? How can we run a school? How can we run a class? How um, budget is allocated for other uh, things within the school. On the medium level, in this uh, educational uh, level, the results would help an important base for how to manage, how to control these schools uh, from allocation, from budgets and, uh, and uh, regulations and policies. But on the macro level, the national level, the data is mainly to, to for policy and strategy planning and developing. I want to speak mainly on the macro level. Usually, the, the policies are discussed on that level. There are many of these that are related to the curriculum standards and the criteria. What 
needs to be known by the by the students, the, the, the main the, the general uh, results, assessment policies, also the performance standards of the students and classes and system educational system as a whole, teacher policies, teacher uh, policies of accountability, who, who holds the responsibility? Was it the teacher, the school, the region, the minister? All of these. Also, it could be, uh, a, could be about extra educational system, which are, for example, which schools ha need uh, more uh, support because it, it belongs to that community or to this uh, uh, town and, and other uh, factors. The results of the national assessments and I need to talk about the international and national assessments that could be included in that. They provide information on the state of education in, in any uh, country and especially about the levels of uh, the students. They describe the achievement, what, are, what levels have they reached, describing the resources also, that are available for the educational system and how can we uh, allocate these uh, resources and also it provides uh, opportunity to monitoring the achievement and the uh, performance as well as reviewing the educational system as a whole from the point of view of data but there's more important use which is how to use these data therefore the uh, assessment results national assessment results can be used and policy making and planning that uh, they, sh they showcase the strength point and the weakness points and especially the flaws that are that is uncovered by this assessment of the students and this uh, is used directly in from writing the general policy uh, of educational system where planning and uh, strategies could be used to have uh, new standards and also uh, we can have a better targeting for these schools in a better way which is usually provide a political cover for the uh, curriculum uh, development I would like to discuss some examples that are usually uh, all the issues that usually uh, affect the uh, education system and therefore the national assessment could cover. For example, there are many questions uh, for the educators about the entries of the education system. For example, what are the characteristics of, of grade X students? We're talking about demographics, about uh, uh, resources, about community, and other factors that we can see if there's equity, if there's not, what's, because that's one of the uh, main issues that we're discussing today. What are the conditions of these, uh, of these educational systems? This is on the policymaker level in general. The buildings of the schools, for example, class size. There's some uh, questions related to standards of educational provision. For example, to what range the schools are following uh, the, the standards of the ministry. Class size, uh, teacher to, to students ratio. And there are also questions about equity in school inputs. For example, is the material resource inputs uh, are, are the same of all the other factors I've mentioned before are are they equal among the, the schools or there's discrimination whether in the material resource inputs or the human resources inputs
other other questions related to the achievement of these students. What is the percentage of the students that have reached X level of skills in, for example, reading or mathematics or science or Arabic language or any? This is also uh, could help the policymakers. Other questions are also that before I adopt a policy, I need to ask myself what, how can we uh, compare the 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 contracts, contrast of, of achievement among, among schools. Is it because of the educational inputs, where there is a flaw in the equity of uh, resources, uh, or, or it is about the school's uh, operation, especially on class level? So we need to refer to this contrast and study it. What are the factors that uh, could influence this factor, this uh, contrast? Is it a school based? Amongst uh, between schools, or it is extra curriculum uh, 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 factors, like for example, uh, students themselves of what they bring from their schools, from their families, sorry, from their communities, uh, from their uh, um, economy uh, level, and uh, potentials and other that. <coughs> issues on which a national assessment system can throw light regarding adopting education policy. The issues are related, relating to provision, issues relating to quality, <coughs> issues relating to efficiency, relating to equity, issues relating to accountability, Accordingly, national assessment system, if designed, implemented, and uh, satisfying certain uh, requirements, some of the questions usually uh, we think of uh, regarding um, taking decisions and uh, strategies, they want to know how, what are the provisions what are what are the relations regarding the variance uh, among uh, students uh, due to the uh, difference in uh, education output the uh, training time uh, level uh, levels of uh, teachers variance of teachers families uh, some uh, questions some inquiries is reorganizing the schools and decision-making levels. Can uh, this interpret the varia variance of uh, levels of students and show the, 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 the role and the differences in addition to other, uh, to other uh, uh, factors, also the fees, the, the quality on, uh, on accuracy and learning standards, how to implement the curriculum, and the change of the students' levels over time. <coughs> this, uh, system, this assessment system, whether in school, uh, whether for a census or a sample, this cannot make a development in the learning of students or the system, educational system, only by conducting such uh, assessments. Therefore, in English they say, you can't keep checking by, by f f feeding it. There should be standards, what are the rates of treatment or accordingly just uh, participation in, in national assessments or international assessments and get the outcomes or results, that's okay. But unless all these, unless these teach
policy and formulate the policy, choose the policy, uh, this will not make a difference. Which is relating to efficiency, also the, uh, the national, the, the, uh, at, at the policies related to uh, teachers, their salaries, uh, bonuses relating to the educational system, also the equity also provides information regarding the, uh, the, the, the variance among the results of the students. There is a variance between uh, boys and girls. Uh, the economic factor of the rich and poor students, public and the private schools. These variances, uh, these uh, are related to the uh, social uh, equity of education. But just to say that uh, private schools are better than public school or girls are better than boys, we have to check what are the policies and factors leading to such variance and lack of uh, equity appearing in achievement of students. We cannot adopt, we, we have to adopt policies that narrow the gap among uh, these uh, uh, categories when we speak about the uh, education policies we uh, simplify the subject it is a trend a decision certain procedure here or there how can the uh, assessments this is the policy cycle first of all I have to put the agenda, it is agenda setting. I, I will not write it for myself only. Not as I know only. There is a, a great uh, assessment where, uh, what, 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 is, what are the disorders in the policy of curriculums. Therefore, there should be assessment assessment activities then there should be analysis of the educational system from this analysis we put the agenda which represents the issues we put the objectives priorities then we make policy formulation formulate the policy the policies include strategies how can we address this matter? What are the program works, plans, programs, work programs? Then we implement, then comes policy implementation. Then comes the role of monitoring and evaluation. And uh, in addition, if we uh, notice that unless there is a policy cycle and unless they have a deep evaluation uh, element detecting the evidences and uh, aspects, aspects of shortage in the existing education systems, we can never put education systems and adopt policies uh, getting uh, programs and uh, plans and putting uh, budgets and the provisions this will not be sufficient to improve the levels of uh, students uh, learning and the efficiency of the education system the most important critical point in education uh, development of education which is uh, uh, learning of students is ignoring the first phase and giving priority to the second phase because they say I want to do such things and push these policies for uh, uh, implementation and there uh, is no 
monitoring and evaluation uh, system then we come to the uh, vacant cycle we don't know what we have achieved or what we have not achieved we'll put one uh, all these matters in one list in one table this is related to the policy of assessments we here evaluating the learning of students we say uh, national assessments and assessments uh, uh, devoted only for uh, educational zones or, or some uh, countries such as GCC countries, Arab countries and maybe international uh, countries. This is the, the assessment uh, level or type. These uh, assessments uh, vary uh, uh, within the scope, their scope. Some of them uh, cover all the students, which is census. This will be on the national level. Some of them use the inspection and sample, which may be national, regional, or international international samples. We notice that objectives of the learning of, of the educational uh, systems served by these assessments as we have already mentioned uh, and detecting certain uh, uh, problems or issues whether uh, these re are re uh, related to quality. We notice that analysis of the Assess national assessment, national and international assessments uh, regarding detecting the uh, quality uh, uh, teachers of teachers and curriculums and the policy cycle. They serve uh, prioritizing, putting priorities and formulating the policies, policy formulation. but they don't plan policy impl uh, implementation. Therefore, we speak regarding issues related to quality, regarding the equity for the budgets and uh, the, the, the equity among uh, students in general or y usually uh, implementing such uh, things will crystallize, will reflect the policies. Therefore, policy formulation is not a simple activity to say this is fit or unfit. There is deep analysis related to, to putting alternatives of the education uh, policy. Is this costly or not costly? Uh, assessment of the policy takes into consideration two main dimensions. I should wait policies leading to a large scale effect on all schools and students or will be uh, cost effective. Therefore, it is an approach between the scope of effect and cost of the policy. Also, the accountability issues, educational systems differ in accountability. What is the level of accountability? What is it the scope it will be for the teacher or the school or the uh, educational system itself and the finance uh, uh, provided for the schools and educational system? will be the tool of the legislator, legislators to, uh, for the accountability of the educational system. This system shows uh, employment of uh, assessment results 
regarding the objective of the educational uh, policy or cycle of policy and type of as national assessment itself. Also, when we speak on, on all these issues related, how to employ the assessment uh, results in the policy cycle to develop. I have uh, education uh, edu 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 assessment system uh, which may be national, regional, or international. I have the objectives for the policy makers related to quality, equity, account, uh, account, uh, accountability, and also I have policy processes. If we put all these things uh, together, we take the uh, outcomes of these assessments uh, related to uh, learning uh, resources, achievement, equity, all these issues will be the first cycle. These will be, this will be useful and we'll have deeper analysis of uh, uh, replying the, in the, the, the questions uh, in the uh, policy making uh, making uh, areas what will be the uh, quality of education this is the most important thing if the national assessments if we give assessment to the students we don't uh, serve the educational policy at, uh, uh, significantly. Therefore, there we have to gather information regarding to the students, their economic situation, demographic characteristics of the teachers, school. The, import, the assessment may be important, but it does not provide a basis uh, uh, or objectives that serve the education policy unless we put attainment or achievement in its context affecting it in general policy makers this is the role of the planners and educators and analysts to put these things then the agenda will be set and objectives and policies will be drawn then they will be implemented such as work programs and work actions and assessment this this is a comprehensive uh, uh, process starting uh, or starting from the uh, results of assessments in all forms and analysis in general translating assessment findings into policy and action depends on it depends on many factors first on the institu institutional capacity to absorb and use information. Just giving uh, reports of uh, describing performance uh, of teachers and schools is good, but uh, this doesn't serve the purpose of a policy. Also, there is a trustworthiness and a relevance of the information provided by the national and international assessment some say that they have destroyed the educational systems in some countries they negatively uh, assess, uh, they negatively damage the educational system as they don't see a rapid development because it needs a span of time, not less than seven years, to show the development accordingly. 
how to create the educational uh, policy and how the policy makers accept uh, that their uh, uh, policies are evidence based and to amend their policies according to the evidences. Many uh, many outcomes of the national and international assi uh, assessment the results are not used because they are looked at such as standalone uh, activities uh, and they issue decisions and reports and they are not analyzed also to what extent there is a participation and involvement in making the policies here I, uh, I conclude the information that serve the educational system at school medium level and higher or micro uh, macro level there should be four aspects or four areas for the information to serve analysis of policies policy formulation policy options and then translating all the policies there should be demographic data of the students we, we should know who are the students who have high attainment or low atten attainment, there should be data on the school operations. Uh, here we speak about the uh, implementation of a curriculum, uh, uh, strategies of education, the surrounding uh, environment. There should be data on learning of students, levels of their learning, not uh, randomly. They should be built logically that serve the interests of uh, planners and policy makers and they say I need data uh, in <coughs> that suit the subject or, or, or of the curriculum there should be information about the students their beliefs concepts and any interaction among these four elements will serve a certain purpose in the educational uh, policy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Kishin, for his paper. And I believe that this paper is an invitation for the educational domain and uh, parents, guiding, gui guiding, uh, guardians, and every individual that is uh, within the educational system could be interested in these uh, information. Where, we, where the, the guardian would receive the information about the student, about the uh, son who is, or daughter who is in the school in the X class, that would the, uh, would, the son, would the child have the qualifications of the same level that they are in. Same thing happens with the student, w with the teacher, where they can push their students uh, uh, through the results of these database of what they have of qualifications and what can they achieve and what uh, uh, performance levels that he can uh, ask them. Even the principal could, could also use the main point of what's the, what's, what are the strength points and the weak points, or, uh, weakness points of the students. Is it in reading, in algebra, in mathematics, in, in science? And in, in they could study and research and follow up with the teacher based on these uh, scores. The regional director as well, they can follow up with the, with the, with the schools that have such uh, issues. We all know that there is a difference between uh, male, uh, male, classes, male uh, schools and female schools. It's the same curriculum, same uh, environment, 
but the scores are always different. There's a flaw. These results uh, reflect this flaw, and now it's time for us to look thoroughly, especially in the uh, male uh, schools, why there are why there is uh, this uh, lack of uh, scoring achievement. Is it due to teachers? Is it the, the, the students? There are factors that we should look at and to develop them into a uh, into uh, policies. And now I, I give you the, the space to ask Dr. Hasif about the paper that he uh, provided. Greetings to the lecture. We we need to know what, what what should be done after the analysis of the questions. Now, the, oh, my question is that since you are a decision maker in the uh, Ministry of Education, what happened in the Ministry of Education after the analysis of the national assessment scores and what are your uh, next steps? Thank you for your question. That's a very important question. You mean the education, uh, Ministry of Education here in the UAE? I'm not a decision maker. I'm an observer. I think that many uh, many results revealed by the assessment uh, scores in the national and international uh, assessments have changed some policies in the ministry. I'll give you an example, and I've seen uh, the uh, director here, director of curriculum here attending. The structure of building the curriculum is changed now because from the data uh, analysis and the best practices of the curriculum and the international level, we've seen that many uh, effective uh, uh, countries, they, they take the standard-based curriculums. And now the standards are, are developed and the curriculum is, is being based on the uh, standards. Also, the policies of training the teachers and developing them and their career paths. This is also based on the uh, results of the studies. It, it showed that the teacher is the one who makes the difference and therefore their needs, their academic uh, needs should be developed. And now the policies uh, that, there's, that each teacher should have at least 80 training hours per year. These are policies that are made that are changed and developed based on the uh, uh, data. Yes, please. Sorry, the translator cannot hear the voice of the speaker. Sorry, the voice is not clear. The translator cannot hear the uh, question. This is a big question, and I agree with you. I believe that the data that's been assembled about the effectiveness of the uh, tr training uh, programs of the teachers are usually analyzed, and I know that they are now being analyzed. And the main function of that is to have an input on the uh, on the educational system of the development of teachers. And this is a fact that is being made. I do not know um, the, it's a cycle, as I said, it needs a time. It needs a span to, to be to evolve. So yes, I know that in the first semester the data was an, were analyzed and adjusted. There are many uh, factors related to the needs of the teacher and also the mechanisms of execution. But we cannot develop one thing for everything from one cycle and one uh, comparison. It's, uh, it is accumulative. Also, uh, regarding to the training, in the first uh, term, 
the training was was put on field in action, and there are many there were some uh, negative feedback that we are now working on. So this would lead to the developing of the second term uh, training, where there would be the packages training packages were better in in uh, in coordination with the uh, educational team and training team, and also there were some uh, teachers who were who were uh, um, nominated by the centers to be, to be the distinguished teachers to receive these uh, uh, training uh, packages so they would be, they would be, uh, they were like the train to train the trainer packages so they can train their own colleagues back in their schools. And in the second term of the, of the, uh, the second cycle of training also there was some feedback of enhancing and developing the training. So now the last term we had uh, two uh, approaches of training one of them was the uh, Gulf uh, teachers and educators uh, conference which, which targeted 5,000 teachers and then there's also the other approach of uh, vocational uh, training of about 12,000 teachers around uh, UAE we, we cannot say that we succeeded in the third uh, uh, cycle also, there are many uh, negatives, but there are also many positive feedbacks, whether in the conference or the training. So the curriculum uh, uh, department is now working on that, that they want to work, they want to have a clear policy with the, with the teachers, that there are uh, some uh, practices that we need to adjust and work on with all the teachers. So the first training package came to enhance that and to promote that second package also came based on a request of the teachers themselves in writing the vocabulary, vocabulary of the uh, short test and that's true some teachers said this is ineffective so the trainers didn't weren't able to provide I'm better than the trainer in that we cannot listen to one uh, uh, opinion only there's one opinion there's other as well if one teacher said that, there are more teachers that, that had uh, positive uh, feedback. Maybe the trainer didn't, uh, maybe one trainer or another didn't uh, perform, but there are others that were really good. So we have the feedback about the trainers as well. We need to have a database of who will continue with us as a trainer and who will not. We need that the, tra the, the teachers to be trained. The teachers need... Uh, whether educational or vocational uh, uh, training sessions to, to have the qualifications, uh, to, to enhance qualifications and the uh, capabilities of teachers. Uh, even though the, te the teacher would say that this is my vacation, I need to be sitting at home, this is the main reason that I don't want, that the teacher would say, I don't want to four hours a day for five days to have training instead of sitting at home. But you need to change this. Uh, culture within teachers and the culture comes within the uh, continuity and when the teacher feels the difference that they have through the training and this is what the ministry is working on to develop these trainings again the question is uh, we cannot hear the question my uh, respected colleague this is a very important note and uh, it's not about the training, but it's about the how the assessment could serve, which policy that we need to adopt so we can have effective programs. Please. This does not come in one application and one click. This has a cycle, the cycle needs time, and there's always feedback about it, but there's also patience. Policies without patience would not work. Yes, please, next question. Equity. The question, you cannot hear the question again, sorry. The 
question is talking about how uh, schools are chosen and then the schools choose their best performers of teachers and uh, students. So uh, it's about the equity of, uh, of the school's allocation, I believe. Again, the voice is not clear at all. Thank you. Thank you. So I believe that this question is very important, but all the things that you've mentioned have have they been proven that the selection of the students academic that are better academically and approaching the the, student, the teachers that are the best, as you could say, did this lead? to a better learning level of these students in the schools compared to the national uh, tests? That's the question. If here the tests would have the, uh, the results and the answer. So therefore, yes, there will be, uh, uh, there will be imbalance in the equity of the inputs, which could lead to gaps in the results of uh, the students' learning system. So, how could this help the policymakers? First, it gives a strong evidence of the educational system that we need to scale to do some scaling up. Where that, if there is a good school that could. Uh, that provide uh, such services, we need to follow that approach. Or could be the other way around. We could see that a failure uh, experience. That these typical uh, uh, students, where they have gaps with other students, I want to have a targeting and allocating uh, uh, policies for the other students, for the other class, for the schools. Where they where they have again the we the concept of the the question. I believe that we always hear this conclusion. Please, do you want to answer yourselves? I want to ask and we sh should ask, uh, reply. It's very important, but it could not be a, it, maybe it's not a true conclusion. Give me time, please. If you may, this is an impression that is not supported by evidence in many cases. Therefore, here comes the cycle of the policies to see that, is it true that the local uh, students and local teachers have no motives? Or it's just a, a conclusion and impression that this may lead uh, to a misconception. Okay. Now I need to revert the conclusion that the policy is to to have more uh, national students in, in the policy making which is a strong, which is a strength point that could uh, help and uh, develop the policy. Thank you. Now we have a five minutes break. Uh, sorry, 15 minutes break. Thank you.
الاستراحه لمده ربع ساعه ونرجع هنا لاستكمال الندوه مثل ما بقولوا صيت لنا ولا صيت فوقها